presidential race continues to grow. Now, this past weekend, Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas announced that he is forming a presidential exploratory committee. And Congressman Paul hopes his strong opposition to illegal immigration and the war in Iraq will set him apart from other Republican candidates. And he joins us now from Houston, Texas. Thanks for taking the time, sir. Thank you. It's nice to be with you. You know, you're one of only six Republicans who voted against the war. You also stood against uh, sending 21,000 more troops to Iraq. What should the Iraq strategy be now that you are uh, declaring yourself in the race? Well, I think we should come home as quickly as possible. There were a lot, of, a lot of false information on the reasons we went in there, and there's no good reason to stay right now. They say that if the main reason for staying now, after you've given numerous reasons, we're supposed to stay now because if we leave, there'll be chaos. My argument is there's plenty of chaos right there now, and a lot of Americans are going to be being killed, and it was never in our national security interest to go over there. Besides, one of the reasons that was given for us going there was to enforce U.N. resolutions. And I'm a stickler for the Constitution. I was annoyed because they wouldn't declare war. If they thought it was important to go to war, the people's representatives should declare war and they should fight it and get over with and win. So I didn't like the way they went and I didn't think we were ever threatened by Iraq. Let me, uh, let me just play for you. Uh, President Bush said something today, so let's listen to that for a second. If we leave before that country can govern itself and sustain itself and defend itself, there will be chaos. And out of chaos will become vacuums and out of vacuums will become an emboldened enemy they would like to do us harm. Now, chaos. sir, that is a real worry. What well, have you to say about that? Well, I think he's very sincere, and he believes it, but he believes it just as sincerely as I do, that the al-Qaeda uh, is there now, and it is a problem, but they weren't there before. And it's our foreign policy that I object to. We used to be allies with Osama bin Laden. Now he's our enemy. We used to be allies with Saddam Hussein. Now he's our enemy. This on again, off again thing is what bothers me. You know, 9-11 was not, uh, had nothing to do with Iraq. Uh, Fifteen of the 19 came from Saudi Arabia. So they're our bosom buddies, and we're, we're their best friends. Pakistan is probably where Osama bin Laden is. We have essentially forgotten about him. So it's the foreign policy over, overall. But yes, there's going to be problems and chaos. But my argument is that it's time that American soldiers quit being killed, and it's time for us to quit killing a lot of other people that have not attacked us. Now, your uh, Iraq pol policy is very clearly defined. Let's move to the domestic front. Um, you ran for president in 1988 on the Libertarian in line and you now say there are two parties in Congress right now big government conservatives and big government liberals and the only difference is what they want to spend money on now um, are you running because you think that there are of the declared candidates uh, the true conservatives are not coming out of this pack well certainly the Republican leadership in the last uh, six eight even ten years uh, and especially in these last six years, we, we have been the big party, a big spender party. We have spent more money on subsidies than ever before. We have uh, we've doubled the size of the Department of Education. We brought in one of the biggest new entitlement programs, uh, uh, the uh, prescription drug programs, big, huge uh, highway uh, expenditures. So I would say uh, that in some ways, yes, they have some differences, but in other ways, I think Republicans have grown to act just like Democrats mm -hmm. in the foreign policy, certainly we can't afford $700 billion mm -hmm. in protecting an empire. That has to come to an end because the truth is, is we're flat out broke and we have to borrow every single penny to fight that war from the Chinese. Yeah. You know, sir, I really can't, we're almost out of time, but I want to get to your immigration uh, uh, platform. Uh, you're calling for action and not talk, and here's a couple of points for our viewers that you want. You want to physically secure our borders and coastlines, enforce, enforce visa rules, no amnesty, uh, no welfare for illegal aliens. You want to end the birthright citizenship and pass true immigration reform. Um, would true immigration reform include a guest worker program in your judgment? Well, you know, those words are tricky because sometimes if you say for a guest worker program, all of a sudden they construe that now, the conventional wisdom is that there will be amnesty. You know, we've always had workers come to this country, but they have to be legal. And we have to deal with the welfare state. We can't allow the illegal immigrants to qualify for Social Security after working here for 18 months. We, we just flat out can't afford it. All right.
Thank you very much for laying it out so clearly for us, Representative Ron Paul. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder now to vote in tonight's poll. Do you believe?